Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on the first day of December, Friday. We're looking at a very look at this. The um, the E Mini popped up to the 4580s, slumped, and that was at about four o'clock this morning, Eastern Time, and then slumped down to the uh, 45, uh, 62 ish level, and then had a sudden spike to the upside here. And that's kind of important, <coughs> at least for this first part of the Friday options expiration. First part of Friday for the first day, uh, first hour, we would say half an hour so far, first hour of the day. Having had a spectacular De uh, November, what is there for December? So we'll go through that in a moment. Let me just go through these very um, succinctly as I can here. You've got the Dow, and one of the things we're looking at here is that when the price is way above the 9 period moving average, and the 9 is way above the 14, and the MACD is good, and the stochastic is flat at 94%, and the on-balance volume is the only thing that I can look at here to say, wow, that is getting overbought. The others are actually pretty good. So the Dow is up 90 points at 36,040. Usually the, the 90s gets a lot of resistance. In this case, it would be 35,990. But we've just gone through that. We've gone to 36,070. Now, so far, this is all looking very strong. And it's broken out of that one-to-one -to, -one to the upside in the weekly chart from the Chapman Way Falling X formation. So the question will be, all of the, the next six weeks to seven weeks, is this really just a single leg A to the upside? Is this on the weekly chart? Is this an old F or a brand new A? If it's a brand new A, this is extremely bullish because every pullback needs to be bought. Um, that decision, as far as I'm concerned, uh, rests on the outcome of the close today and then the close next Friday. Since it's a weekly chart, we can take a little time. But what's really exciting is 36,952 was the all-time high in January of 2022. And uh, with a sneak to the upside today, not quite even a sneak, is actually quite a nice move. You've started the leg C up. I have a one-to-one -one measure move that said, I said I didn't think it could happen, that by December we would reach uh, this cup formation to the 36,952 level. And it's unbelievable that we're actually at 36,000 right now. Um, less than uh, 90 points, uh, sorry, 900 points to go to the upside, and it's in leg C. So, so far, this is extremely bullish, and the MACD finally crossed the 9 period moving average has been positive all the time. This is technical Friday, so I'll talk about this in purely uh, Chapman Wave technical terms. Uh, the stochastics uh, at 78%, it's under 80%. It's, it's good, but it's not great. On balance volume was extremely overbought. Now it's come down and starting to rally again. The MACD did just cross positive. So all of this is saying it's a work in progress. And so far, everything looks pretty darn good. That's the monthly. Weekly chart, very good. Daily chart, holding extremely well. So I drew this in uh, maybe two days ago. I said, this is probably an area of support if there's any pullback. So far, we haven't even come close to the 35,200 level. Uh, so that just says buying just keeps coming in. Right, and you've got to look at the technicals and say, when will this turn down? Well, at this particular point, it's leg D. That's where you've got to become a little bit cautious to say, hey, uh, at peak D, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Wave methodology, that's where other things can happen. Right, but wait a minute. Let's go to the S and P. So the S and P has come back uh, from an early amount of weakness, but if you look at this particular pattern, this is a pattern that says either you go sideways for a little bit longer. And then you break to the upside, making this a new platform. Or you've got, and I'm going to draw this in, it's kind of narrow for this Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. But it has it has somewhat of a pattern that can resemble it. So this says either you roll over or you treat this as the body 
right here. Let me just open this up. There you go. That's the top part. That's the bottom part. It's kind of uh, a little baby stalk, stalk formation. What happens is that's the leg, long leg to the upside. Then it takes a long oval pattern, but it must look like an oval pattern and not a rectangle. This does look like an oval pattern. If you take out this low right here, the low of 45, 37.24, the low of the 30th of oh, <laughs> yesterday's low. If you take that out, this changes the pattern completely. But what I am looking at is that the nine, the price is above the nine. The nine is at uh, 45, 43 in the S&P. We're at 45, 70 right now. The MACD is starting to dip down, but it's still strong. Stochastics flat at 89%, starting to dip a little bit. That's not a big deal. That blue line, the on-balance volume, is the one that says to me, it's somewhat overbought. That's the only indicator that I use as a, really an overbought and oversold uh, indicator. And it says that there should be some, the limited upside, but now you have to watch to see where support holds. Okay. If you look at the weekly chart, 4607.07 .07 was the high of July, the week of the 28th. We're under that, but it's still only a leg A. And the MACD is good. Stochastic said 85% on balance of volume is not yet quite overbought in the weekly chart, whereas it is in the daily. And the price is way above the nine. The nine, nine's above the 14. And you got this chap wave. I didn't draw it in because it was starting to look a little messy, but I'll do it now because it's Technical Friday. So let me show you what we're looking at right here. So we have taken uh, a little bit, a little aggressive considering uh, what's going on. But it, one is a directional move and the other is more an insurance uh, on the short side. And uh, we've got a pretty tight stop, but it is saying that in a way you define your usual technical indicators because the nine is still way above the 14. But if you remember, I don't, I'm not comparing it right now. I'm just saying just purely on a technical basis. If those of you recall, the reason why we went short August the 1st when the, the nine period moving average was still way above the 14 was because it looked from that overbought level and at a peak, at a leg F, that there should be some kind of a pullback. Turned out that was the top at 35,679. We went, went all the way to the 32,327 low. So, yes, do I expect the same thing here? No, it's a different chart pattern entirely. Um, but the near-term indicators are suggesting that there is a chance that, in fact, we start to di digest those huge gains starting from a few days ago in the S&P. The Dow hasn't done that yet. Now, I need to just do something here. Did I do that correctly? Uh, so, yeah. So within the context of everything we're looking at here, I need to go back to this. Um, the QQQ is really, in a way, now it's, it's starting to be a little bit of a... a um, kind of an indicator. I wouldn't call it an icon or anything like that. It's just a, another indicator that I'm using that says the difference between the 393 high that was made on the 20, uh, 23rd of November and the 394.14 high that was made three days ago showed that all the technicals were starting to weaken except for the ninth period moving average, which is still pretty strong. I'll talk about that because we've broken out above the previous high of July. So we need to put this into context. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, Dow's up. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we've got uh, the Qs at uh, 386.97 down on $1.65. I had a couple of questions. I'm going to get to them and also some follow-ups from yesterday with the currencies. I didn't quite finish all the currencies. So here we go. So you see the distance, uh, the difference between the in this distance of one, two, three, four bars, just four sessions, where the technicals, the MACD started to turn down. It hasn't yet crossed negative. Uh, whoops, I think it's just crossed negative right now. As you speak, it was very close. And look at the stochastic now at 80%. It was up in the 95% area, area just a couple of days ago. And the on balance volume made this little triple top. And that just says... It's a kind of a warning to say that there could be some consolidation. After such a spectacular move, 342 to 394, the 50-point move, that's spectacular. You can expect some kind of a digestive phase. Okay, that's the QQQ. IWM, I'll do this real quickly because we're going to watch it closely over the next couple of days. The 200-period moving average has been a magnet. is at 180.37, up 73. Will this show rotational support and that's what i'm really expecting now that there's a rotation rotational market that some of the magnificent seven and i'm going to get to them in a second are starting to show kind of toppy action and we'll go to that in a moment let me just first go to i want to show you gold uh, gold is up nine holding very it hasn't taken out i've got an alternate count here uh still very strong i know the price is over the nine nine is over the 14 um, MACD is good, stochastic's favorite is at 93%. So it's holding very well. Silver <clears throat> is doing something slightly different. It didn't have any pullback like gold. Um, it has continued higher, F slash B. And this is just a spectacular, more than a one to one to the upside in the, uh, yeah, a little bit more than a one to one to the upside in the weekly chart. A monthly chart is finally starting to improve. So that is a good sign. That is that's really important to 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 monitor because how it held over the from this past Wednesday into this coming Tuesday, this is a very important moment for gold. And the reason is, if you look at the dollar, dollars at uh, one of three sixty nine. I'm a little delayed on this, so maybe. Uh, of as you think GDX on a daily chart is getting choppy. Thank you. I'm going to get to that in a moment. I just wanted to cover these right now. So the dollars had a lovely move. I discussed this for months and months and months, and I said, 
in the arch formation, based on the chamber wave methodology, and since this is technical Friday, I'm going to talk more about that. I use the, I like to use the trough of a cup after you get to a peak, and it looks like in price, this is where a computer wouldn't do it, not yet anyway, even AI couldn't do it. The eye just does it beautifully. It says right here when you at this particular level, and I drew this in at the double top over there, I said, you know, if this starts to fail, I'm looking at the potential one to one, which should take us to 102. Uh, 102.94 was the low of August the 30th. And I put that in. We just washed and washed. I had the Chapman wave inside uh, wedge, target support line going to that level. Um, oh, I just moved it. I must, I must have moved it by mistake. It was actually it's a little bit lower. And uh, it kept holding that support. And then finally, what did it do? It went a day early. If you're going from August the 30th, how many days is that, right? To the low of uh, November. So you've got uh, September, October, and you've got a whole of November. So it's three months. And to the day, well, within one day, it goes to one, one to, uh, 102.61. Next day, it goes to 102.74. And I said, this is exactly the place where, based on my mirror image, uh, technique as well as other things this is exactly where you would anticipate there's at least a bounce in the dollar did i know i have no clue about it whether or not it would work but that's the, the methodology i was using has worked so many times that it looked like it could i did have a low of 103.18 on the 21st of november but uh no, sorry, on the 20 yes on the 21st of november but the, the distance between the 9th period and the 14th period moving averages was so great that I said, I, I just let, let it run out. Let's just see what happens. And lo and behold, it did that, and now it's running very nice. It's going to take a ton for the pink 9th period moving average to cross over the 14th period moving average to go positive. Uh, the MACD has improved because the histogram improving, and the 9 is getting closer and closer to crossing positive. If it does that, actually, that's going to be impetus to go to the 200 period moving average of 104.19. That's where I think it's going to either stall or we'll get a test of any result. That's not a big deal. 107 down to 102 and have a tiny little bounce to 103 or 104. It's going to have to do a lot more that, than that for the, the direction, the bigger direction of, goal of, of the dollar, especially since it held the weekly trend line support. Um, and this week, today's Friday, You've got an S which says, unless the dollar really moves a great deal over the rest of the day, I don't think it can, um, this is going to be an S for the nine period moving average turning down in the, for the first time since the turn up, the crossover back on the 25th of August. So how that all plans out, all the technicals are pretty weak, actually. So this, as I say, could be just a balance. But to, to go with that, just real quickly, EUR, USD, I don't want to do too much here, um, has made a G star C. It looks very much like that's a G. I don't know if it's going to get to a D until it, it digests more. And it got repelled at exactly the 200 period moving average. Well, talk about the 200 period moving average. I think this is the chart I wanted to show. Um, yeah, look at this. Yes, the E-mini. Look at this. Support, support, balance. Where does it come down to? How's what's it hugging? Forty-five seventy-one. Yesterday, what what we what we were looking at? Forty-five sixty-three or something like that. And the two hundred period moving average right there uh, has used support of forty-five seventy. So we're in sync here to say this is going to be an interesting. You've, the ten twenty time is right now. This is where new things should happen. Uh, is this where we start to see uh, selling come in? Or now new buyers come in for December? This is going to be very important. So uh, I'll go. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I just want to finish up with the currencies. I didn't do the British pound yesterday. Uh, BP, I'm just going to, not the currency pair, I'm just doing PP, the continuous contract. And look at this Doji candle, peak F, it could be. One, two, three. It's not an instant restart, but it could be a recycle. But in the meantime, look, this is what I'm talking about. The price is over the nine. The nine is way over the 14. The MACD is good. Stochastic's up at 90%. On balance volume hasn't even gotten overbought. So I'm looking at this and saying, <clears throat> British pound has got an, is in an uptrend. Um, the weekly chart didn't quite make the arch formation in the time. It went close with that trough C, and now it's running. That's usually a good sign. 
So it looks a little bit like the silver chart actually, so it's doing quite nicely. Now, within that context, I want you to go do the USD JPY, and then we're going to move on uh, out of the currencies. That did a peak E. I, did, I don't want to go through this again today, but it hit the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, plummeted down, and now it's trying to rally. But this is going to be really important support in the weekly chart, and that goes right here on the weekly chart. Will this? I don't want to do too many lines. Will this be an inside track propellant zone, making the 146 point, let's call it 146 level, really important support, or does it break down? Those are the things we're watching. Now, just as we go to the break, I want you to just show you something. I, because I did this during the show, is this. An Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. It's called in the Chapman Wave methodology. The Chapman Wave leg A spike failure pattern. <laughs> That's what we're going to be watching. So I'll be back in a moment. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So uh, the TLT, I'm, at this point, I'm calling it a peak F. Uh, I'm looking at all the technical still pretty strong and the weekly chart is starting to improve. But I'm just going to leave it at that. It can still go to a G. If it goes to G, I'll call it a G slash C because um, the technicals are strong. But right now, it's really important to monitor this. It's up 26 cents at 91.80. Bonds, uh, this is a continuous contract. It has a G slash C. Uh, leg A in the weekly. We, we need to monitor this. Now, what's really important? So the question is, 
in the SMHs. Uh, what, what is it? the question came in, Basil, you use the semis all the time. What is it telling you now? What it's telling me is that this peak C1, C2 double top in the Chapman wave, I, I may as well explain it because this is a technical Friday. There, I found over the years that I missed some peaks because I was waiting for peak D. And then I found that if there was just a fractional high, uh, sorry, a fractional a rally that missed making a new leg D by a fraction, and I do mean a fraction, sometimes a little bit more, and it depends on the look of the MACD and stochastic, but if it misses it by a little bit, I can call it a peak C1 and C2, especially if, and in this case I've got it right here, especially if there's a little hiccup in one of the technicals that says, you know what, you could have, it easily could have gone to a D, you just missed it for whatever reason. Then I use it. And why? I don't want to be sitting at a peak C waiting for a D and it comes tumbling down when I could have used something that gave me, a, a, in the Chamber methodology, you have no technique if you don't follow rules. And that's part of the rule that I developed, that if there is a fractional new high, be prepared, take something off at least so that you're prepared that there might not be a D and then put in a stop. And uh, in this case, C1, C2, so it went to 165.44, just missed it the, uh, two days later, started to pull back. But if you look at the MACD, the MACD is turning down and cross negative. If you look at the stochastic, it was fantastic up in the 97.6% area on the 20th, and now it's at 68. If you look at the on-balance volume, it made a fantastic top right on the day of the 165.44 high. So in this particular instance, um, the chances are, and if you're looking at this, I, I was speaking to one of our tigers uh, the other day who's developed some really nice, he uses Chapman Wave all the time, but uses other techniques that he's developed, moving averages, et cetera. And he said, check out the three by three. So Dave White used to always talk about the three by three. I had long conversations with Dave White, and we decided that the use of the nine period exponential moving average was different to the way the three by three actually functions in, in methodology. But the technique to use it as when the price pulls back after a certain level, then bounces then fails and comes back under it, what does it mean? So I studied it for years. In fact, we were in the process uh, before he, he suddenly died. Um, of discussing <coughs> a couple of aspects. This was one of them. And he had just unbelievably wonderful techniques. So I found that I had to look at the three by three in a different way. First of all, I always looked at his. I've never, this is the first time over the last three days or so that I've actually had a technique that I've drawn in the three by three. So I, it's, it's new to me. There are other techniques that I have all, all in the charts here that people have discussed. I never dismiss them. I've never shrugged off anybody's technique if they found that it works out really well. And if I find I can use it, I'll use it. But most of the time, I always go back to my, my core, uh, core techniques. But in this particular instance, you can see this little red line here. That's a three by three, and we've pulled back. So the nine period, I respect the nine holding over the 14. It just says... Don't get too cocky about uh, thinking that's it for this particular uh, symbol that you're following because that 9 is powerful until it, and it's still very high above the 14. So any technique that you have that says to you, you could go, say, shortly, uh, semiconductors or whatever it is, you have to have a pretty decent stop in place, a tight stop, because there, are, there is still residual strength. So talk about that strength. Let's look at the, um, and we'll just go to the SPY. Have I updated the SPY? Yeah, PE. Look, there's there's the ninth, there's the three by three, but there's the nine period moving average. Uh, it has the SAR, parabolic SAR still positive. So this is saying that it's a process. And, if, and the reason why I want you to go back to the Dow chart is that you remember I had this whole thing. Uh, do I have it here? Yes, I think I still have it, where I was showing you the the Dow making a high 
And then I said, it's going to take a while for the strong nine period moving average to cross negative. And it took about 11 sessions before it turned negative. That was the Dow from the August 1st high. So it's a process that, that is involved. And the process says, watch the SMHs because you've got weakness in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is uh, probably the premier name that everyone in the semiconductor industry turns to. I've got this as a peak B. Um, there's no other way I could count it. If it fails under that, that and it made a new all-time high, so this is a legitimate B. It could fail. But this just says to you, look how long it took from that top right there with that doji candle, second day, it's called Chavway Silent doji candle. Um, and even today, even with this pullback of 3.53, the nine period moving average hasn't crossed negative. Now, I can go to what I was asked about before. Can I go to Microsoft? And look, Microsoft made a high of 384.30. I just want to check that I updated the 384.30 three days ago. I get candle today, but considering where it's come, oh, I should also mention, we're well along from 338. So it went from 338 to uh, 384, just that's a huge percentage move. I use this as a proxy for the Dow. I'm just, I can, oh, I can't believe that I didn't say at least by, we, we are still along the Dow from the low of 220, uh, 2020. We're still along a portion of the Dow from the low of October of last year. And I just, I don't know why I didn't say, look, step in at least to the diamonds at this point. Instead, I said, we're going to use Microsoft because Microsoft has the Dow, it has the S&P, it has the XLK, it has just everything that you want. It should be a fabulous uh, move, and it was a fantastic move. But that doesn't excuse me for not adding to the Dow Diamonds and the UDO double at the low. It's just uh, inexcusable, but that's the way it is. Not that we aren't long, but we aren't as long as we should be. Now, uh, so within that context, this is pulling back. And you had a Chapman Wave sign in Doji yesterday. That's where there's a little like a plus sign, either the day before, the day after, what could turn out to be a top. At least a short-term top. I'm saying not a, a real serious top. But I'm expecting. I, I I would want this that Microsoft. So we've taken money off, but we've got we have a good core position, and we want to add to it. So the 363, this candle here, this big candle that really broke things out to the upside when it took out the left side, right side price time match, uh, going to um, what was the price? Going to 366 on the 10th of November. That's the candle of the 360 area. That's 12 points down. So that's what I'm thinking that that could happen. Now I'm going to get to GDX as soon as we return. Dow is up 63, s and down 3. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so just in terms of technical Friday, so when I looked at this earlier on in the one minute chart, you see here's this high in the uh, E-mini of uh, 45, I think it was 84 something, 45. No, this one here is 45, 82.25. And then it pulled back and the next one was 45, 81.25. That's a little bit much, but then it had a retest. So as I was coming on air, right here i didn't have time to do it but i thought ah perfect c1 c2 uppercase i should put c3 so right here i grabbed grabbed the short side that was on air and it suddenly dipped sharply i can't remember exactly where i covered it but i covered it at 71 just right on the 200 period moving average um, so that's the use of the, and then what I always do is I put in a plus sign, a red plus sign on the final C1 or C, uh, sorry, the C2 or C3. I've even seen C5s before. And uh, the longer it has C1, C2, C3, the greater the chance is you're going to come and revisit it, but it, it's usually very soon. So in the meantime, um, that's how I use it because the MACD was turning down. I got the unbalanced volume reversal. Everything said great. I didn't have time to even think about it. Just as I've done it so many times that it was a reflex action uh, doing nothing right now. Even though I'd spoken to you and said, is this going to be a Chubb wave, single leg, a Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down move? We don't know yet. The fact that it's still right here, that says, mm, now you've got to be careful because you're finding some support, especially since in the, in the one-minute chart, the five-minute chart, and the 200 p moving chart, this whole 4570 area has been like a magnet. It means it's really important. So you're probably going to not push down immediately. It's going to find quite a bit of support to rally. Okay, so I've got that out of the way. Then I said for about five, five or ten minutes, I've been saying, well, look at the GDX. That was a question. So the GDX right here, that's the gold miners ETF. Oh, I didn't mean to do it in the one-minute chart. That's not the way we're going about it. Oh, and let me show you this because this is the gold chart. I don't know where it is right now, but I'd done this earlier on. I don't intraday trade gold, um, but this is the chart I did. Let me just see. It went to a PG, and that was at 5 this morning. Then it came down, went under the 200-period moving average, and then it held this bottom. And this bottom was at um, the continuous contract at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon at 2,053.5. Look where it went on the pullback. It went to 2,052.6. Isn't that amazing? And that's uh, hours and hours later. And then it has a sudden peak A, big spike to peak B. And now it's gone to a C. And it has to be called the C because you're after a G. You never get a, a, an H, so that has to be some other letter. But also went to a lower low, so that's all this on the left side is done. Now you're looking at new action. So gold is in leg B. 
B there, peak B, and he has a peak C. It could still go above the high of today, which is 2073 on the continuous contract. So gold is acting really well up 10.9. So let me get back to our story. And our story says, um, oh, and you see here, there's an automatic Chapman wave automatic resistance level at 4575.32. All right, let me get back here. So the GDX. So the GDX on the, on the daily chart has gone to a leg E. There's no other way I can count it. Here's your starting point, 25.62 back in early October. Goes to the 200 period moving average, which had been repelled from over and over and over, got repelled. Then it came back with another peak, A, B, C underneath that. So this gets priority, yeah, gray A, gray B, gray C. And then as it breaks that previous B, it goes to a D. You can't go C because you've already got a C. So that becomes a D, and it goes to an E, a modest new high made at 31.58, but it's a fabulous leg B above the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. And that's just saying to me <clears throat> that my theory about gold earlier on, going from the October low and coinciding with the October 7th um, massacre in Israel, uh, says to me, uh, that this is, so this goes back, and let me just update the gold chart. This is all pertinent to what we're looking at right there, right there. Says to me that I initially said this move up here should have been much higher if it was gold related to the geopolitical situation as it always is with any conflagration, especially in the Middle East, where gold spirals higher. I like to see the gold miners lead, not gold. That's number one. Number two is <clears throat> that pullback said, yeah, maybe you're right. This move up now says that gold has come back into play because of two reasons. One is you finally got the gold miners leading, leading in the sense that they caught up and now they're kind of acting even better. Um, and I think that we're looking at gold saying what's going on in the Middle East right now is not going to go away very quickly. And that's kind of what it's looking at because it's not, it's not like um, gold had acted so fantastically when, um, when the dollar was pulling back, gold should have really spiraled. And it didn't. So... I said for the last maybe year and a half, I've been saying all these different indicators that had absolute, they were like mirror images of one another or they were locked in together. They worked in unison. Don't think of that way. Look, you know, you've got the uh, VIX index at um, 12 and it should be down in the 11s or 10s. So there's a lot going on that isn't the normality that we had before. So in that sense, dollar and gold are kind of, think of them separately, but yes, you are getting the relationship of gold weakening as gold, um, as, as the dollar strengthened and the dollar, uh, when the dollar weakens, gold goes up, but it isn't a direct correlation. Every once in a while, you get parallel movements in the two, just a couple of times a year, a few times a year, I'd say. So think of it this way. So GDX getting a little overbought, just in the chapter we've lettering, but the price is way, way above the nine period moving average. The nine is way above the 14. The 14 uh, is way above the 50. The uh, MACD is really strong. Stochastic's flat at 97. The on balance volume says, uh oh, that's the one indicator that says you're a little bit overbought. So I hope I've assessed that, and it doesn't tell you where I'm expecting levels to be. The gap that we saw the most, remember, gaps mean nothing. It's just like a doji candle or a moving average or anything you want to call that is representative of something visual that you look at on a chart. But when price moves back or up towards a, a gap and it gets closer and closer, I'm saying to you, absolutely, gap, this gap now becomes important at 29.87 if you start to see the GDX under 30.60. And it's at 31.36. Then I'm looking at that. But so far... All the technicals are saying that the 200 period moving average of 30.16 in the weekly chart is really strong support. 
hope that helped you. Oh, GFI, GFI. Um, GFI has, yep, it broke out. It's in a leg D as well. All of these are in leg Ds or Es. I'll be back. Dow's up 72, S&P's down two. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, so the uh, GFI Goldfields Limited trading at 50.45 is in leg D. Made a beautiful cup formation, broke out of it. Remember, I didn't put this in, I should have. And when we were talking, this is... Um, like like a Chapman wave overlapping wave where you've got a, a peak on the left side then you pull back and then it makes a peak A and a B underneath it and if it overlaps that previous peak it, it joins in and creates a peak C that should go to a D it's called the Chapman wave overlapping wave well today's technical well we don't have time so that's what I'm looking at 1605 is is left side in the cup formation talk about the cup formation UBC is a stock that we've had from $3.64 the cup formation that I was looking at in the monthly chart, I drew in, and I was expecting the 660 level to be our target. Uh, that was the high of April, the 20, of, uh, April of 2022. Today's high is 663. So we've accomplished that. Um, it looks very good. Leg G says C in the, uh, well, I did this yesterday, but I didn't expect it would break out quite as nicely as this. Uh, to go to that level. Yeah, that's UBC, Uranium Energy Corporation. Um, just real quickly, and Microsoft uh, Microsoft is a kind of a, a benchmark here for us in the big, big, big caps. 
And that's just saying it's still acting quite weak. It's down seven. It's taking a bit of a breather, which it really deserves. It was a leader. Now the leader has to take a break. So as I'm looking at this, so HMY was a question. Let me just do this. And then I'm going to say, uh, yeah, HMY broke the left side high. It's looking fantastic. How many gold is a South African? Uh, HMY is a South African gold at 626. Um, yeah, the left side, next level of resistance is about 668. It's acting very well. So with that said, I just wanted to say, um, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes and great programming here today. And uh, one other thing I wanted to say is, um, yeah, so watch the close today. If the, if the Dow gives back and actually starts to go minus 40 with options expiration, everything instead of being up 100, off to 235, 240 this afternoon, we could see 